Do you need email marketing and newsletters as an artist? I have ignored this concept for years, like I'm an illustrator, not a big company, and I hate those ads that regularly spam my inbox. If you feel the same way, then this video is for you because actually emailing is a super powerful tool to develop your creative business and sell your artwork to fans who are dying to see your news. As with the other videos in this series, you will also find our free PDF to download in the description with lots of newsletter ideas to get you started. So, are you ready? Let's go! Let's start by defining the benefits and purposes of email marketing from an overall business perspective and then we'll elaborate more specifically for artists with concrete examples. So typically email marketing starts with a form on the business website where you can just enter your name and email. Afterwards, you will receive regular emails with offers, promotions, tips, etc. Or you've made a purchase in a shop and poof, every few days you get a new promotional email. We've all received these kinds of messages, we hate them, we don't even bother to open them anymore. And I think that's also what puts many people off from actually getting started with their own newsletter. Newsletters feel intrusive, spammy, like forced sales, and you don't want to be like that. But surprise, good newsletters are so much more than that. In fact, think of your newsletter as a regular appointment with your biggest fans to amaze, amuse, inspire, and even educate them, as we'll see right after. With emailing, there are four goals. Number one, to keep a safe way to contact your followers no matter what happens. Number two, to have more visibility than on social media. Number three, to stay in people's minds with a friendly and more intimate relationship. And number four, of course, to promote your offers and artwork. And you might be asking yourself, why bother with a mailing list if you already have plenty of social media to manage? Well, it's simple, you don't own any social platform. If one network disappears, so do all your fans and content. And maybe you remember the Facebook slash Instagram outage a few months ago where no one could access it anymore for a while. How much time and effort did you put into developing your account and what would you have done had these sites not reopened? How many of your subscribers would have tried to Google you in the hope of finding your website? And how many of your followers actually remember your name? With email marketing, your subscribers belong to you. They explicitly agree to receive your emails, you can export them to Excel, you can contact them anytime. In short, it's your list that you will keep forever unless they unsubscribe or you delete your account. And even if you have fewer followers than on social media, they will usually be people who are much more receptive to your work, who are already fans, who already really like your work and who are excited to see more of it. And especially if you want to make a living with art, your subscribers who know and trust you because you regularly pamper them with your private newsletter will be more receptive to buying your illustrated products or ordering illustration commissions at some point. Also, they will see every single news you put out because unlike Instagram with its algorithm where only a fraction of your audience sees your posts, well, here the emails land in the inboxes of absolutely all your followers. So if you're starting to see the benefits of emailing, then let's see what kind of content you can create. People need a good reason to give you their precious email address. As I already mentioned, we don't want to receive dozens of spams that pollute our inbox. First reason why people will give you their address is because they already know and trust you, they love your work and want to know about everything you do. Second reason, they don't know you well yet, but they exchange their email for benefits, artist tips, inspiration, exclusive content, promotional offers, etc. And most people fall under this category. So what content to offer and how often? Emailing can be quite simple, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, but with content relevant to your audience. For you as an artist, ideas for newsletters could be illustration or manga previews, coloring pages, shop codes, discounts or early bird places for commissions, artist tips, sharing experiences, useful resources for artists, etc. 
Again, you can download a list with lots of newsletter ideas, specifically designed for illustrators, mangaka, and other creatives, and choose the topics according to your artwork to get started easily. You'll find the link in the description, and as you can see, yes, I am encouraging you to join my mailing list right now, and let me explain my thoughts because it works. So in my audience, I have the aspiring artists who want to grow, and they come mainly from my YouTube channel, like you may be here. So to entice them to join my mailing list, I offer downloads that go along with my videos and allow you to go one step further as well as unlocking private access to my private resource artist library where you can gain access to all the previous and future downloads to develop your passion. People sign up primarily because they see value and benefit for them. I also have my audience who likes my work and is interested in new projects, products, etc. So I send out a newsletter every 1st and 15th of the month with tips for artists and the new resources of the month, but also with my latest products, convention dates to meet people, promotions, etc. So there is always free value, but also my paid offers that allow me to make a living as a freelance illustrator. To give you other examples, there's my friend Ay Marielle. She motivates people to join her mailing list by offering a beautiful fantasy coloring book. And then she nurtures her relationships with a newsletter, kind of like a personal diary, where she openly shares her experiences and advice, for instance, the results of her first convention, the importance of taking time to recharge your battery to be more creative again, and it's always in a kind and inspiring way. Lorica, artist named Tapfu, is a published author on Webtoon. She encourages you to join her list with a very complete guide to help you write and structure a successful webcomic. Then her newsletters are full of good advice and feedback to guide young artists in the Webtoon industry. Elodie Illustration is a master in the art of newsletters that you always look forward to. Her website is well supplied with various freebies motivating people to give their address, a guide to art pricing on the homepage or cheat sheets with her blog posts, or simply a form to be notified when her new collection arrives. Then her newsletters are subdivided into several parts, usually an overview of her current projects or new products in the shop, her weekly vlog, and an answer to a subscriber's questions about how to be an illustrator or creative advice in general. So I hope these examples give you a good idea on how to make your newsletter work. You'll find all the people mentioned in the description and again with newsletter ideas, titles and freebies to download free in the description. I was really the first one to say for years that newsletters were totally useless for artists and mangaka and now I'll honestly tell you that if I had to choose between social media and emailing I'll always always take emailing because it's much more intimate, you know people take the time to read, they are genuinely interested and it's so much more rewarding. The setup is also quite easy. I recommend you to go with MailerLite, which is free for up to a thousand subscribers, easy to learn and allows you to create nice layouts, schedule your news in advance, and even create a classy and professional form even if you don't have a website. I tested MailChimp, which is also free before, but it seemed less intuitive and more difficult to set up, so I definitely recommend MailerLite. Anyways, that concludes this special series of four videos to help you get started in the creative industry. And really, whether it's full-time, as a hobby or a side job, I really hope this has helped you to see things more clearly and to take action. Again, enjoy the workbooks that accompany these episodes. They are really, really made with so much love after my own experiences and after the questions that I regularly get by students and online. It's really done to support you and help you you get results. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments. I really love to hear your feedback so that I can continue to provide you with topics that you find valuable and that will help you develop your passion. Also remember to subscribe if you haven't so already and we'll see each other as always on Tuesdays 6 p.m. to grow from art to business. See you soon!